Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Grabarek. And I'm Dr. Katina Sawyer. And welcome to Thriving at Work, a Worker Being podcast. You can learn more about us on our website, workerbeing.com, or follow along on LinkedIn or other social media. And also, our book is out for pre-order. Super Yay. excited about it. Go get it now. The link is in the show notes for the book. So today, Katina, we're going to be talking about exercise. Oh. Yes. Um, it's a good new article about exercise and like all the benefits and impacts I guess it can have. Nice. But before we get started, I want to ask you a question. Yes. When you have a really busy work day, what is your trick to get yourself to fit in a workout? I have to do it first thing in the morning. Mm, okay. Um, that way, if I'm super busy during the day, I definitely can't count on myself to squeeze it in between things. Like that's not a good strategy for me because things will bleed into each other and I won't have time. Um, and at the end of the workday, sometimes I feel like tired. I also like, um, this is not positive, but I, uh, frequently like skip, I eat like a lot of protein bars during the day basically, and not like actual like sit down meals. And so <laughs> dinner is the time when I like actually eat a meal usually. And that, um, means that by the time I get to the end of the day, I'm really hungry. And so mm -hmm. I don't really want to work out on like a completely like hungry stomach because I feel kind of like, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. And then after I eat, I also don't want to like jump around right after. So it feels like I then have like a timing issue. So for yeah. me, I need to do it before anything else happens or else it probably won't get done. Okay. Well, that's interesting. And I mean, I think there's like some research on timing workouts and all of that. We're not gonna be talking about the timing specifically, um, except for it doesn't matter as much for this specific study, but I hear you. I feel like I have to have a really strict plan. Otherwise it's going to disappear really fast. And I also yeah. don't like to work out on a full stomach. And like lately I've been doing a lot of Pilates and you're doing a lot of core work. And if I have food in my stomach, I immediately feel nauseous. It's like, yeah, like for 20 minutes with a full stomach, have fun. It's right. like, no, no, no. I will be puking. Yes. Um, so I can't, I can't eat right before either. I need to have a few hours before I do it. Yes. Um, but for me, I, I am not the best morning person. I've been trying to kind of play with that, but what's been helpful is like, honestly, I think a big reason why I can get it in now is because it's like if I sign up for my class and if I don't cancel within 12 hours they're charging me mm -hmm. for not showing up and that's just so it's like what I've been doing is just blocking it it's like okay it's a busy day I get that it's busy maybe I'll have to work like an extra hour when I come back but I've blocked it so I gotta go I have to go there's no choice yeah um so that's helped me but the time of day kind of varies like I do try to block it once I have it on my schedule, but sometimes if I have to move things around like the week before I will. And so I feel like I will go sometimes in the morning, sometimes midday, sometimes in the evening, um, kind of just varies based on my schedule. And I just make sure I block it. And to your point, like if I'm going later in the day, it's like, I make sure I have a good lunch so that mm -hmm. I'm not hungry, but I'm not like full by yes. the time I get to it. Yeah. So I think for you, it sounds like it's less about the time of the day and more about like having some skin in the game, like some commitment to that you have to show up. Um, yeah. And for me, it's a little bit timing. Uh, but also, I have to say, I am horrible with anything I have to leave my house for. So I, another thing that helps me stick to a routine, because that's like not my like I'll pay for things and never go and be like, oh man, I wasted that money. And that like, I, that, <laughs> that like doesn't um, register to me as like a strong enough motivator. Um, but if I'm in my own house and I have like the means to squeeze something in, I don't have to like get dressed and drive there and whatever. I'm much more motivated to be like, okay, it's 30 minutes or it's 45 minutes, like max. That's it. I'm going to wear what I'm wearing. I'm going to do the 30 minutes or the 45 minutes. And then I'm going to rinse off quickly and keep doing what I'm doing. Then I'm much more likely to do it. So it has to be like in my house 
And mm. it and in the morning is better for me to not push it off later in the day. But the in my house thing is a big thing. Yeah, that's fair. I think in my house, I'm more likely to convince myself out of it. Mm. Um, so I need like some external motivation. For yeah. A little bit. And then to your point, like if I'm paying for gym membership, there'll be plenty of times I won't go. But it's the fact that like for that specific class, yeah, they charge yeah. you. Yeah. So like I could totally, I've definitely fallen into the thing where I'll like pay for a membership for something and like never use it. But it's like I pay for the membership and I registered for a class. So now it's like I have to literally just decide within those, that 12 hour window that I'm not going to go and mm-hmm. that is going to charge me. And that's where I... And like, it's helping me stick to yeah. it because it's like, ah, I don't want to be charged. Like, it's not even that much. It's like 15 bucks. But it's still, I mean, but that's it's a lot yeah. for like every, if I did it a lot, it'd be like, that adds up fast. Um, So that helps. But to your point, I think for me, it's like, I just have to block it and make yeah. it a priority. If I don't block it, I'm not doing it. Um, So I think I've been able to tear myself away more than what it sounds like you struggle yeah. with like the tearing yourself away part I've been okay with that lately um it's just I have to block it otherwise I will it won't happen always book over it yeah it's true there's a lot of things and barriers in the way even though when I when I go I'm like very like also like old school I do these like um like the autumn calabrese like beach body workouts like they really work for me for some reason so even though I know that's like not like a trend right now um but <laughs> old um, lady <laughs> yeah I know but she always says you know you gotta um like showing up is half the battle right like get it like mm-hmm. and once you're done you usually don't regret that you went you will regret that you didn't go but you usually don't regret that you showed up um mm-hmm. which I think is true for Totally. kind of some threads through what we're saying but I'm curious how this relates to what the article said yeah so the article actually is talking about like if you work out even in a day where you have a lot of demands what impact does that have on you the next day mm. so if you're working if you're like a really long schedule or there's a bunch of stuff in your way like what does that mean so that's what I was asking because like I think it's really easy for us to get busy and let things derail us and then we never get to that workout. And so this study was kind of like, hey, you know, we know that people have these high demand days where they are more likely to skip exercise. And is that a bad thing or is that Mm -hmm. okay? Right. Yeah. Okay. This is very interesting. I'm curious to hear more. Yes. So let me give you the top three takeaways and then I'll kind of dive into it a bit more. Um, So takeaway number one, Exercise the day before improves your mood the next morning and your engagement at work the next day. Hmm. That sounds good. Yes. And then that mood and engagement actually then leads to less fatigue, better well-being, and higher performance on the job. Hmm. Well, that's positive. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Everyone wants to be feeling better and doing better. Well, also and organizations then, want that too. So that's kind of a true. good thing. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, they want the higher performance. And then, um, interestingly, exercise is particularly impactful if you're facing demands that are called hindrance demands. So these are like kind of more frustration type things like red tape and different roadblocks that are getting in your way. Um, That's where you see the biggest impact of exercise on your mood and how engaged you are the next day. Awesome. Okay, so particularly if I'm having a day where I'm feeling frustrated or held back by things, which could be a time that I you know, really want to just go home and curl up in a ball, I shouldn't probably do that. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Yes, you're right. Like when you feel like you want to curl up in a ball because you're so frustrated, you're so pissed off about something that happened at work and it was just a really long day and it was a hard day, that's when you need it the most. So this paper, it split, it did two different studies. So there was kind of like um, overall, like a consistent theme across both studies that are really important and the takeaways that I highlighted. Um, but as I mentioned, like what they were really curious about is like, how, how do those high work demand days play out with exercise? And what they found is that in general, you know, exercising the day before has positive impacts or indirect impacts on like well-being and performance, but they're indirect in the sense that 
the exercise directly impacts the mood and engagement. And then if you're in a better mood and you're more engaged, you're feeling better, your well-being is better, and you're performing better, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think that's something that you know, has an intuitive appeal to it. And there are so many people out there who say, you know, if I miss my workout or I, you know, stop uh, engaging as frequently in exercise, I start to feel worse. I start to feel more run down. Um, and, you know, I don't have as much energy, which, you know, those things are related. Um, and so I think, you know, this has some intuitive appeal, but the good news is that this is also a really positive reminder and of the importance of exercise. I also think that, and I don't know what they counted as exercise here, but I also think that sometimes people think that in order to get exercise, it has to be some extreme thing because there are a lot of societally extreme trends. And so what we think of as exercise might be more overboard um, than it needs to be. I'm guessing in this study, they probably counted um, a wide range of activities as exercise, which to mm -hmm. me is always encouraging. Like when I hear that it's good for you, um, it doesn't mean that I need to like go do, you know, I don't need to be throwing tires and jumping off boxes if I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. They basically had people rate just like their own physical exercise for the day. And it was like, how much time do you spend on vigorous exercise, moderate exercise, light exercise, right? And they described like vigorous as breathing harder than normal or much harder than normal. Moderate is a little bit harder than normal and light is, you know, walking, easy things like that. And mm -hmm. on average, the people in the study, so in the first study, they only did about 12 minutes of vigorous exercise a day, 19 minutes of moderate exercise and 36 minutes of light exercise. Hmm. So the amount of vigorous exercise is fairly low. And then in the first study, let's see, I just want to take a peek back. Um, but again, it was it's similar where they're asking them to let them know like how much time did you exercise. In the first study, they were literally just asking like, did you exercise? I Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like you spent sufficient amount of time on exercise the day before? Um, and that's it. So a couple questions around just did you feel like you had time to exercise? And um mostly people were saying they exercise about 20 to 30 minutes. So not huge, like you said. Yeah, it's not I think like that's requiring really helpful. massive amounts. Yeah, I think that's really helpful because I think, you know, as we were discussing, there are a lot of trends um, in workouts and exercise routines. And while a more intense workout routine may be great for some people, I think especially as people are getting older and, um, you know, maybe some of the things that you used to be able to do might risk injury. Um, now, it's good to know that it's not necessary to count exercise as I went for, you know, a sprint around the neighborhood or something. But what we're really saying is that, you know, getting some physical activity um, mm -hmm. and that can range from light to vigorous is what's going to produce these positive results. So even a little bit, every little bit helps um, to garner those those results for yourself. Exactly. And I just looked back to double check everything. And I remember saying this before and I confirmed that basically the amount of exercise or even if you rated your exercises like moderate quality or not great, it didn't matter. Like you could have, you, you know, the person that said they had very little exercise, but they'd still, they exercised, but it was like, you know, the 10 minute person versus the hour long mm -hmm. person. They both had similar, it didn't change the relationship between exercise and how people were feeling the next day. Um, it's just, if you didn't do anything, that's when you got saw it. that got relationship it. go away. Okay, cool. That's great to know. I think that's a good, uh, to kind of understand what the definition of exercise is here might also help people to have a little bit of a a sigh of relief that you don't need to be, you know, running marathons in order to garner these benefits. Yeah. And it was actually really interesting in the first study too, they, they looked at sleep as well, just kind of as a control variable. And what they found is that obviously we know sleep impacts mood and engagement and blah, blah, blah. But if you had poor sleep or a short amount of sleep, but you did exercise the day before, mm -hmm. the, it almost like buffered the effect. Like you still had a strong relationship with, being in a better mood and being huh. more engaged. So it's kind of like exercise can complement sleep. So if you're having a hard time sleeping, there's like you're having sleep issues, or if um, you know, like, oh, I am going to have to work like another three hours, get in that 20 minutes of exercise that can kind yeah. of help you. Yeah, that actually makes sense because I feel like 
a lot of times, especially with the type of work that's prevalent now, if I've had a bad night of sleep or I'm really tired, just like staring at the computer and like looking into the void or like into Zoom, like it ma- it <laughs> yeah. does make you feel more drained. But I can imagine mm-hmm. that if you got up and went for a walk for 20 minutes outside, it'll give you that like little refreshment that you need um, to be able to sort of regain that energy because you're not just like focusing on you're you're getting a break from work essentially too Mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting yeah and I know we've talked about in like previous articles on the site and I think in one podcast episode maybe about how physical activity can act as like a recovery tactic and helps you detach Mm -hmm. from work and I think you're right I think that's probably why you see this relationship where it kind of like buffers some of the impact of having poor sleep because you're getting at least you're getting some level of recovery Mm -hmm. even if it's not sleep um so that's helpful Yeah, that's awesome. The other thing I wanted to share is this idea. So like the first study, they really focus on like just having a lot of demands in general, right? So the more, like if you had a lot of demands at work, then that relationship between exercise and like performance and things the next day was really strong. If you had just kind of like a normal work day, it didn't have the same kind of impact. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of like, okay, like, you know, obviously you're going to feel good if you were exercised, but it's kind of, there's something about like, getting that workout in when you're having a very stressful day. Mm. And the second study wanted to unpack that a little bit. So it was looking to see, okay, what kinds of work demands are we talking about here? Which ones are actually driving this relationship? And what they found is that high hindrance work demands are really the thing. So just to kind of explain the different types of demands, so they talked about challenge demands. So those are things like having a lot, like it might be high workload, but having like high responsibility things, but things that generally you think um, can help you with like your learning and growth or like a sense of accomplishment. The hindrance demands, those are parts of your work that are just annoying, like politics at work. Um, You know, maybe you're waiting on somebody to get something done and like they got it to you last minute. And so like that frustration, right? It's not something Mm -hmm. that's helping you grow in any way, but it's really just like obstructing your ability to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, I feel like that's, particularly important because like we said before, those are the times when you might want to like do the exercise the least. Um, so it's kind of a good reminder. And it also, you know, anecdotally, I think people do say that like, you know, this is like a way for me to blow off steam and stress reliever and things, right? Like people talk about that, Mm -hmm. but I haven't seen a ton of data that suggests like that specific mechanism. So from the workplace at least. Um, so I think that that's, a really useful reminder for people listening that um, the thing that you might think that you feel like doing the least on those days, it might be the thing that you need more. Exactly. And I think we've talked about this before, like, you know, some stress is good stress, right? Like it's not every kind of stress is bad. And I can think of an example, like last week I was running a workshop and I was working really long days, but, uh, I was having fun, right? I enjoyed what I was doing. I was learning a lot. Um, Yeah, by the end of the week, I was really tired. But like in general, I was not feeling so drained Mm -hmm. because I woke up and I woke up fine. I woke up like energized, able to move forward. And even though I didn't usually squeeze in a workout because my days were really long, but I would have considered the demands on my days challenge demands. So these are stressors. These are things that are putting a little stress on me, but they were not like hurting me in the sense that I was feeling like I could grow and learn from it. And based on this study, it makes a lot of sense because that is the type of demand that would make it be like, okay, well, you don't actually like the workout is less right. important for your mental right. health. But if you have those like really frustrating demands, that's where you see it. So basically their theory around that is that if you have one of those like annoying demands that obstruct your ability to accomplish your goals or move forward or dealing with politics and drama, you, like you said, have that sense of recovery need because you need to blow off steam because it was really stressful and awful, right? But on the challenge side, you know, if you have a really high challenging work demand day, you might feel like you got a sense of accomplishment around it, right? Like you have some sort of development and you don't need to recover in the same way. Mm-hmm. And so the benefit of the exercise becomes less significant. Yeah. But here's right. the fun catch. Ooh. 
Okay. So I like a fun cash. If you, <laughs> if you have a day where you have low challenge demands, so basically you don't have a lot of demands at work either way. Nothing is like annoying and getting in your way, but also nothing is challenging you. Mm-hmm. You actually need that exercise more. Interesting. So it's kind of like if you don't. So part of what it sounds like you're saying is that these challenge stressors, the stressors that actually end up being engaging and interesting that people like, if you're that kind of makes up for the lack of exercise almost. It's like you're getting energy from your work as opposed to getting energy from the exercise. But it sounds like in the absence of those challenge stressors, either in a neutral state or where you've had a stressful day, the exercise kind of helps to give you the energy that you didn't get from your work. Yep. hundred percent. That's exactly what their theory was. They basically said like you need, you know, if your tasks are not fostering any development or growth or, you know, effort that you to achieve any goal, then maybe going and working out helps you feel like a sense of achievement, helps release some of those like feel good chemicals that make you be Mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I did something right. So in those days, exercise is important. So like, if you're thinking about how to map out your days, right. If you have a lot of like meetings in a day back to back to back to back that just feels like kind of cumbersome and blah go work out if Mm -hmm. you're working on a really cool project and you're super engaged in it and invested work out if you can but it's not as required Mm -hmm. and then if you have a boring day go work out (laughs) yeah interesting that's really really interesting I also wonder if those boring days are more inactive so you're just Mm. kind of feeling like um nothing really happened. You might be kind of like feeling more sluggish. Like there's like no stimulation, good or bad. And so that becomes like your way of stimulating yourself is to get some physical activity, get up and move around, do some other kind of activity, because maybe that just means like your day was devoid of action. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. I think that's probably a good piece of it, right? You're just like, you need something to wake you up almost like yeah. shake you into existence because you had like a really slow, boring day. Um, yeah, I think overall, I mean, when I really thought through the findings of the study, like it makes a lot of sense. Like there were moments where I was like, Ooh, like, you know, if I have a ton of work to do, does that, why would that my exercise not help me there? But it really just depends on what that type of work is. Yeah. And I think that's super interesting. Yeah, I do too. It kind of gives you a little guidebook for Mm -hmm. when is best for you to, I mean, obviously, I think that probably if we had a medical doctor on, they would say, well, you know, from the physical benefit side, trying to get an exercise a little bit every day is a good thing. But from this perspective of the workplace, um, when is it more okay to give yourself permission to skip because you're going to benefit less in other ways? Um, I think this is a really useful guidebook for deciding based on a variety of different factors when it might be most important for you to take those steps. Exactly. Yeah. And I think to your point, right, if you don't, if you don't have to skip, don't skip. But if I'm going to be working out three days a week, four days a week, and I know on like Wednesday, I'm running this, like, like I said, I ran a workshop or I'm doing something that I really love. Maybe that's not one of my four days. Yeah, I should think about my four day being something else, right? So you can kind of plan around it and make sure that you're optimizing um, what days you work out to kind of help you recover from a particularly stressful day or a heavy day or whatever um, to get yourself feeling better the next day. So I think there's a lot you can do there. And then from an organizational perspective, I mean, it's a good reminder like, hey, like make sure your employees can go and fit in their exercise, number one. Yeah. So we don't want workloads that literally destroy their time fully, right? We yeah. need to give them space. So that's an important thing. But also like, I know we talk a lot about how wellness isn't a program, but there's a lot of perks that companies provide. And so I think it just kind of shows that it's not a bad idea to have these perks, yeah. Right? Give people gym access, make it cheaper for people to, you know, do whatever workouts they want to do and, um, and you'll see the benefits. So like it's, it does definitely doesn't hurt to have these kinds of perks. And I think in this study, it kind of shows like if people have access to it on these really stressful days, it's going to benefit everybody. 
Yeah, agreed. It's not bad to have the perk. It's just that the perk has to go along with a culture where people are encouraged to actually do that. Um, exactly. And that means that, you know, if somebody is telling you that they took their lunch break to go to a Pilates class and they're otherwise delivering what they need to deliver in a reasonable fashion, right? You're not trying to hold them to some um, off the chart standard. Then there are some people out there who would be like, oh, well, like, that's not in the middle of the workday. Like, why are you <laughs> doing that? You know, there are people mm -hmm. who have an, uh, an aversion to that, but making it so that people understand that if they can squeeze it in, they should squeeze it in. And as long as they're completing within reason what they need to complete, like, you know, that should be encouraged and leaders should share when they do the same thing. I mean, we talk about this a little bit in our book as well, that role modeling that behavior could have an impact on whether or not people think it's actually okay. Because it's one thing to have something on the books, but it's another thing to actually see people living that, using that, and feeling like it's okay for people to actually take those, take that time, take the class, start your workday 15 minutes late so you can squeeze in your morning workout as long as you're not like missing a meeting or something and everybody realizes that, oh, that's okay because we can depend on you to get done what you need to get done. Yeah, I completely agree. I think we're in a culture that makes that feel weird, like societally. And so to your point, we need our leaders to model these types of behaviors if we want people to be able to actually practice it. And again, like you have conversations, you set expectations very clearly so people know like, okay, I need to have this thing done by the next date and if certain meetings pop up, but there's no reason why if somebody's asking you for a meeting, like I thought about this with my Pilates class as an example. If someone wants a meeting at 11 a.m. and I was going to take that, or take a class during my lunch break, 11 to 11.50. Why should I have to move things around if someone's requesting it the day of, right? Then I'll be charged my $15 and blah, blah, blah. The, if if I had another meeting at that time, they would move it, right? right. Like, they yeah. would be like, oh yeah, we can't do that time. That's fine. So yeah. I think there's like this need for us to kind of reframe like we've making this a priority we've blocked this time we're going to be doing this at this time and as you know I'm getting my work done I'm able to move things around it so there's no reason why I can't take that 11 o'clock class um assuming obviously the, the type of work you do I think obviously we're very lucky because we have like office work but not everyone can do that but like if you have that flexibility and your leaders are able to support you then that's another way to just to get this physical activity in and break up your day. And, and, uh, we talked about the recovery piece, all these other good things, but also if there's some frustrations and challenges, like you're going to feel better and you're going to come to work the next day even better. So it's actually good for your leaders if they let yeah. you do those things. No, a hundred percent. I think that's such a good point. And really, really is true that, you know, part of it is being in an environment that allows for it. And the other part is, allowing yourself to let go of whatever stereotypes you might have inside of you that make mm -hmm. you think like, well, I can hang on to this as long as no one else remotely even wants this time for me. But if anybody else even thinks about wanting this time for me, I'll gladly abdicate that time. Because as you mentioned, often when you set a boundary around your time and you just hold it, people are fine with it. And if you think about how you respond to other people when they say, well, actually, I can't do that time. You're like, okay, let's find another time. You're not like, that person couldn't meet with me at the exact time that I first suggested. Like you're not, it's fine. Um, we figure it out. So I think there's some, exactly. some crafting of the environment that people with power and organizations need to do. And then some also kind of deprogramming around your own internalized norms of how to behave. Completely agree. Yep. I think that's true. So hopefully this study will be a good reminder for folks, for leaders that are listening, employees, make sure you take that time to exercise and leaders provide the time so people can actually disconnect at the end of work and go work out or come in a little late or take that lunch break walk, whatever it is. Um, let's try to be flexible to allow for people to get that exercise in, obviously for all the physical benefits, but also for that engagement, you know, feelings of well-being, good mood and performance. It's all yeah. great things. It's awesome. I really appreciate that you read this article. I really liked it. And I think it's a good reminder for everyone to get that activity in, um, especially if you are having a stressful or a boring time. 
<laughs> yes, multiple times where this is important. But yeah, happy to share. I'm glad I found it. Uh, thank you for listening to it. And to our Val listeners, if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to send us a note at contact at workerbeing.com. Um, we are coming to organizations and starting to share our framework from our book. So please reach out if you're interested in having us come talk and speak, or if you're interested in like a bulk order for your organization of the book, um, we can kind of help manage that for you if that's something you are interested in and again if you just want to pre-order for yourself the link is in our show notes thanks for listening thriving at work a worker being podcast is hosted by us dr patricia grabarek and dr patina sawyer and produced by ali johnson's